right, a time for a Belveth game. It's going to be a beginner's guide to Belveth. I'll explain everything in as much detail as I can for you so you can understand everything correctly. Uh, In-depth build explanation. While I will still go through most of what I will be building, uh, everything explained in detail will be on Patreon below. So be sure to check that out if you want. And yeah, at 50 seconds, we're going to back here. We are like, there are many different ways you can start on Belveth. Paths I do like are like Raptor start here, for example, into Blue Grump. Like a path like this, same kind of goes for this way. It's quite strong uh, as an aggressive start, but I'm just going to go for the consistent version of this. And we're just going to go for a nice full clear. Never really anything to go wrong with that. Something you should just uh, pretty much always keep in mind, always do, especially if you're just starting out in jungle, right? So starting with Q here, just pretty much auto attack Q the entire time. And your Q applies on hits, applies damage, everything. So it's very, very strong. Cooldowns are per direction specific as well. Uh, your E is a damage reduction and targets the lowest health champions first. It's also a decent lifesteal, good survivability off of it. Your W knocks up in a certain direction. If you hit an enemy champion, it resets the dash direction as well. So you can dash, knock up, dash if you... Uh, yeah, well, if you have the correct target for it, I suppose. The, 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 if, you hit, if you hit the W and everything, right? And then with your R, it's... R basically just straight up empowers your kit. Um, you get, like, extra stats, extra, like, yeah, it just makes you your champion stronger, simply put. There is a lot of text to go over here, but it simply just makes your champion stronger. Also, um, like, a mechanical big difference is that your regular Q doesn't go over walls in your form, but if you're in your powered R version, it does. So that is something to keep in mind for that. Everything down, E at the end, get a bit of lifesteal, execute damage, etc. Zack went mid lane here. We are just gonna keep nicely clearing. Kinda use your skills off cooldown here pretty much with your Qs. Don't need the potion to clear either. Just use your E enough. He's a relatively high cooldown though, so you do have to be a little careful. If you're gonna go for like a play, I'd recommend having it up. Good. Um, unfortunately, my Alawi died before I like get to clean up the rest of this clear, but it happens. Okay. Well, if I had a if I had a gank, I would smite this on top side if like there was an opportunity for it. But I don't here, so I'm not gonna smite. We're just simply gonna hold the smite for the scuttle in this instance. Might be able to invade the Zac here as well, because he went mid lane, so he's going to be delayed on his top side. If I can maybe smite his blue or Gromp, that would be kind of nice, so that's what I'm going to look for here. Probably doing his Gromp at this point. There he is. There we go, reset my direction. That's a good flash. Doesn't particularly matter, but because of course in this situation I'm fine. He just gets the flash out of that one. Quickly get the Zek out of here. This guy's gonna fly back, so we should be fine. Finish him off. Get some damage reduction for a bit. Gonna start trying to run with Ghost. Maybe zigzag a little. Alawi is not rotating for this. Yone just completely chased it. Zek, I was I figured Zack was gonna probably walk back in the direction he did. Because that's pretty common, honestly, for uh, people to do. They're gonna be like, oh my top lane is gonna rotate. Let's let's try something, and then I just killed him instantly. Which is good. Now we're quickly going to reset and get the bot side response. We are delayed slightly, of course, but that's completely fine. First item will be Kraken Slayer. Get the uh, Noon Quiver first. It's very, very strong to get first. Just use your dashes to run out of bot side. Now, for Belvef, you do want to play for the Void Grubs, but ideally after you hit level 6. So I don't particularly want to get them before 6. The reason you want to do it after 6 is because you get, then get your Empowered Ultimate off of it. But before 6, if you kill the Void Grubs, you won't. So that is something to really keep in mind uh, when playing this champion. If you can delay the Void Grubs until after 6, that is the most ideal thing for you. Doesn't mean that I say give the Void Grubs to the enemy jungler and don't contest them for it until you hit 6. Absolutely not. But if you can delay it a little and maybe like finish it clear or hit level 6, if you get like a nice advantage or something, that would be very, very nice for you. Otherwise, you're going to delay your... Um, delay your empowered form for a while 
pretty much for the next four it drops the spawn right back is bot lane should be able to finish these last camps here because of what I had, like, with the Gromp on his side and everything. So if I just finish everything now, I should be able to get the Void Drops after and be very, very strong with it. My goal here is to hit 6 first, and I see Jack Bolt, so I know I can easily do this. This camp should hit me 6. I might be able to get a top lane gank into the Void Drops or something like that. But this gives me the empowered version of my form. I'm going to smite here because of top lane right now. Damn it, he already died again. That's unfortunate. Uh, level 6, though. I was really hoping to uh, get the clear done and then and then go for the top gank, but my Alawi dies a little too quickly. Auto attack, group him backwards. So you can just dash through them effectively like this. And just lower them all at relatively the same time. You can E here as well to finish one off. Then you click your R, you have to click your ultimate to get it. Don't just right-click the thing that's spawning, you have to click your ult. And now I'm the empowered version of Belveth, because I waited to be level 6 before I did anything here. So this makes me much, much stronger. Uh, if I go for the invade here, that's actually extremely risky, because Yone is much stronger than my Alawi, and he's going to be walking out of base here. And Zach's most likely in topside, but I can't contest it because of that. So what I'm going to just do here... Oh, actually, I have enough money for this. Wait. I'll do it like this, because I can buy some normal boots with that. Dash towards both sides, and I'm just going to go for the dragon objective at this point, I think. Uh, Zach's going to be top, I should have pinged that. Ah, actually, Alawi is 6 now, so this is a very, very scary thing to do for the enemy team. You can gank an Alawi, but only really after, or before level 6. After level 6, you are not looking very good on that one. Generally speaking, at least. Right, just clean this up. E here as well. Okay, clean this. I should be able to run bot lane here, hopefully. Mm. This is looking good for my team, actually, yeah. Okay. Reset my dash direction there. Dash out. Oh, God. Execute damage. There we go. Perfect. Pick up the R again. Ooh, am I gonna survive that? Nope, I'm not. Uh, I honestly don't mind dying to a support like that. It's kind of okay. I unfortunately don't have enough money. I was hoping a Maokai would tank it, uh, but I respect the fact that he was low HP. It's okay. I think he probably could have tanked it. it. It's fine in that situation. I trade into the support my shutdown, which is not the worst. If the Misfortune would have gotten it, I would have been much more annoyed with that. But this is fine, really. I thought I could actually survive that, but I barely didn't have enough HP to survive that. Do not have my ult form anymore now though, unfortunately, but you know. It happens. I think Yone is gonna recall here, so I probably have nothing to look for there. Yumi is top lane, very interesting. For me right now, I'm just looking to clear my camps up again. Everything is up. Uh, we do still kind of want to look for that dragon. Lane's looking interesting. Might have to rotate for this one real quick. Let's see. There is a ward there. Gonna ghost. It's fine. Interrupt him with that dash right there. And just E to finish. It's fine. We'll pick up the ult by clicking R here instantly. Jump out the wave with the echo. So he can back. Max your E second. I have one minute on those void grubs that I do want to play for. Yumi has given up on misfortune, it seems. Uh, at this point, I can probably do the dragon. Should be okay. I still have 50 seconds on the void drops, right? So I can just do this right now. And do this into an E. Gonna hold my W. Smite that out. I pick up the ult, of course. Get the reset on that. I might be able to look for a bot lane play here, which I will do. Very nice. Pick up your R again by clicking it. And now we instantly reset, because I do want to get my empowered version of these Void Grubs right here. I also have Kraken Slayer on base. These two camps are not that important to me right now. 
Against the enemy team here, I will be buying the Steel Caps because the attack auto attack reduction is actually very good for Yone and also Misfortune potentially. But, I mean, Mercs aren't going to be too effective against this team anyway. So you wanted one of the defensive boots pretty much regardless. And uh, the knock-up CC from Zack doesn't really get... You, Tenacity doesn't really work on that, so... Go for the Mercs, or Steel Cap, sorry. And we go walk over here. Oh, there is the Zack. You into this direction. Towards that sideways. I may have trolled slightly. I can't finish this because my team isn't rotating for it, unfortunately. Malawi is just kind of AFKing top and my Echo is diving mid lane for some reason. So I'm going to have to stall. My ult's going to time out here in a second, sadly. This should be fine. Oh, God. He pressed E for damage reduction. Jesus, man. Echo, like, walked all the way to Narnia on both sides. I was a little too aggressive there. I actually genuinely thought I could do that, but Yone has a lot of damage. Zack as well, apparently. Bit too aggressive on my end. Bit, bit too aggressive there, unfortunately. Ugh. Should have played that a little bit calmer, I think. Okay, so Stridebreaker next. Uh, you can also go Blade of the Rune King next if you want. Uh, it's technically stronger damage-wise. You're just going to be much squishier. So that is kind of up to you in a situation. If you want to go Blade here or want to go Stridebreaker, I'd recommend Stridebreaker to most people. It's because it's like a bit safer, you know, uh, makes you tankier, etc. Blade of Rune King is more damage though. I, I do have to be a little bit more respectful. Like the Yumi definitely was a bit annoying and like his XCC and stuff. A bit too much damage for me to take. Let's get this down. I am only interested in like getting one of these really. The rest doesn't matter that much. I'm gonna smite the first one so I can pick up the empowered version of my R. Just get this down with an E. Very good damage. I doubt I can do anything about this on top side, honestly, but... Yeah, Yumi is low, but the fact is, the, the question here really is, can I kill the Yone with the Yumi on him, right? Because Yumi can just sit in him. Let me check his topside camps here. Maybe these are up. Nothing much going on here. It's pretty tough to go for the fight there. I'm just going to take his wolves. That's fine. Dragon's in like two minutes. Uh, I should be able to go top lane here. Mm, I'll take a Gromp too, actually. Since I'm here, might as well. I don't think a turret dive is going to be very warranted. I don't. That's not going to happen. We can dash over the wall with the Q because we have the R and power version, right? Mm, that's nothing to do here. Really nothing. Let's fight some bots. The ally has been slain. Oh, wow. In my head, I genuinely thought for a second that that was... Uh, Wow, that's really all me. I actually thought the the Alawi pull was the 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 more, the pullback tether from Yone for some reason. Do not ask me why, because I don't have the answer for you. But that's what I thought in the moment. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just gonna go do the Rift Herald at this point. Could be fine. I could have probably ghosted there and made that play a lot cleaner, but I yeah. Turn it down. Just gotta finish the Rift Herald here. Pick up the R. No, that's a mistake. I'm leaving. Too aggressive. Ghost is active, so I'm fine. Jesus. That Yumi, like, Yumi is the scariest part. Like, I'll be able to fight a Yone, most likely, but with Yumi there, it's just like, ooh. Gotta be careful. In this situation, we're just going to keep a nice, consistent, clear pacing. As much as we can, at least. We're going to clean up the top side three camps, and then we're going to look at the objective spawn on Dragon. W that. I'll just E real quick to get it cleared. Take the reset here, and then we're going to look to play for the Dragon. Okay, I'll buy both of those then. Right, I can clean up the bot side three camps. Uh, actually, maybe not three. I can do like two, get the level up, or one, get the level up, and then look for the dragon, probably, something like that. Tiamat, you're going to be clearing extremely quickly. 
I'll go for the dragon right away, I think. Oh, that's a bit scary. Back over there. Can I do this dragon? Yone is top. A uh, Rallyan Soul is relatively low. It should be okay. Okay. 223, so like 1500 I'd most likely be able to. I could just E-execute here, actually. Should be fine. Over the wall. After the guy. Perfect. Pick up your R reset. Make sure to have that timer going. Okay. Trying to hit him with that. Didn't have a dash in his direction initially, so that's fine. Get rid of this. Gonna take his camps if I can here. Definitely look for his jungle camps. The more you can deny, the better. Gonna leave this up so I can dash over the wall here. And my uh, like herald empowered R is still active, so I can push with that on this on this mid turret. Quite a significant push. I could potentially herald here, but it's a bit risky. E for damage reduction. It's okay. Pick up the R reset off that one, and then we're just gonna Rift Herald here. To push this turret down. Don't want turret aggro. Turret is down, that's good. We can just use the next push here as well. I'll be clicking on it right now whilst it, when it walks past the turret first. I can bounce it into this turret right here. Dash into his direction here. Not much else to do. I'm just gonna like look at this push, man. This push is ridiculous. Okay. Ooh. A bit of drifting. We're good. Walk him in the air. Finish off this guy. Perfect. Pick up the R's here as well to reset it once again. Like the longer I can extend this Herald empowered R, the better it's going to be. He's gonna go on me. He is. That's fine. With E for damage reduction and execute damage. Okay, I'm so dead here. There's nothing I can do anymore. Yep, that was a little too aggressive on my end there. I did not look at the respawn time of Yone, and Yone is definitely a scary dude. But look at the push, man. Like, the push is ridiculous. The uh, Belveth, like, I guess passive, like the, the Void Grub thingies that spawn, right? The, the small minion thingies that spawn with, uh, with the empowered, like, Rift Herald Baron or Void Grub R is ridiculously strong. So, that's good. And we're gonna go Blade of the Rune King next here. Again, like, I'm against the tank here as well, as some, having some sustain is very, very nice. So we're gonna go Blade. There are many options to build for. You can go, like, Cleaver here for armor penetration. You can go Terminus for double penetration. Uh, into, for most players, I'd recommend going Cleaver over Terminus at the moment, because Cleaver makes you generally tankier. Terminus doesn't. Like, this thing doesn't give you any defensiveness, right? But your Cleaver gives you, like, a bunch of HP and ability haste, etc. Like, here as well, I don't have the RM power, so now I can't dash over the wall. Just to uh, reiterate that. The big difference you have to keep in mind. Gonna clean this up. Clean up some of these both side camps. I'd want to look for this Baron to get my Empowered R back, if possible. E damage is really, really high now. That's a really, really good top lane push, though, as you see. Very good. There we go. Finish this off. I, I still, I really want to look for the Baron. At the like within the in the meantime, I will be looking to clean up some of these camps here, so I can just, uh, you know, get a bit of XP, steal a bit of XP, getting engaged on. Oh, well, that's a bit awkward, isn't it? This E, it finishes it off. It auto targets. Oh, okay, finish him off because I didn't have it on the last hit there. That is such a painful ultimate, though. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> Aurelian soul damage. I'd want a Baron here. I. Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I guess I could have picked that up. I was a bit worried about getting murked by Aurelian soul after I did that. I'd like the Baron. So I can get my R power. I was very wary about picking that one up. That was. Uh, I don't know about that. I'm gonna have to wait a bit for my team here. I'm gonna quickly sweep. Getting the Empower off the Baron will be completely fine. 
I don't want to be the one tanking this because I do buy far more damage than them. Whoever tanks Baron gets a debuff that reduces your damage to Baron by 50%. So I really want to be sure to not be the one that does that. Because my damage is by far the highest here. Q whenever you can. And finish it with a smite and then pick up your empower there of course. We're going to reset first. And then we're going to play for the next objective in Dragon. We can afford our Blade of the Rune King right now which is very strong. At this point, I'm probably going to look for the last two items in the form of a uh, Witsend and a Cleaver. You can go Terminus if you want to as well, but the Cleaver at HP is actually going to be very, very nice. The Witsend Magic Resist is going to be very, very nice. So that is a combination of items I'll most likely be going for in this scenario. Should I get the Dragon here? Pick up the Extend of this, and then we wait for the to spawn for this so we can dash over the wall run out bot lane nope ah damn it i was so close it's okay look at these voids spawning again obviously because we have the increase from the baron so we can use that for a nice push just hit the net uh, hit the inhibitor here these void minions are very strong for a push okay aurelian does have a very good wave clear though Lock him up as not damage reduction there real quick, so it doesn't really hurt me too much. Extend this R. I'm gonna go push the mid turret here. Don't have to rush into any fight. I can just like calmly push the turret while they can't really do anything about it. This way I can spawn my voids back because of minion interaction, right? It's a good flash. That is also a very annoying knock up. E for the damage reduction didn't go off correctly. That's kind of annoying. Okay, R for the extend. Good flash. Man, what is these flashes? God. Can I E please? Thank you. E for damage reduction. Good. Whoa. Let me pick this up real quick. That's damage. That's no magic resist damage. Ouch. Our alien soul hurts. Yeah, it's a bit too much damage to take. I have no magic resist, so the early soul strats me at the end there. Wits End will be on my next item to uh, counteract that a little bit. They actually get a hold on to the game for that one. Probably could have finished off this if I just focused it a little bit more. But Aurelian soul hurts, man. Like Yone Aurelian soul. Pro yeah, it hurts. <laughs> what can I say? Fair play, mate. Uh, it's still fine, though. Right, out of base, probably going to be looking to really walk for the red buff quickly and then most likely onto the map to try to end the game. Because it's just one push. If they don't go separately, which they are currently going, I mean, if they walk into an Alawi and lose the fight, that is also GG, but does it look like what I'm doing at the moment? Yeah, I say that. I will go get the red buff for the team, because, yeah. Beautiful. Red buff for the team. Very good damage. All we have to do is just end now. I'm getting close to 16, so I'd like to get that, if possible, before a next fight. But, I mean... Yeah, it's close. My team is pressing forward, so I'm going to have to walk forward, though. It's okay. One kill to get my ultimate power is kind of what I'm looking for, if possible. Put that down. You, nope. Okay, we dash back out, it's fine. I was trying to get like a nice reset into it or something. Level 16, good. Going to focus on some minions for that. That's the one I'm looking for. Can I... Ooh, okay, I got CC locked, I see. Um... I've said that's the one I'm looking for, but that was painful. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, man. Getting actually, like, I was trying to get my R off this, but I got CC'd, so I couldn't pick it up. If I could pick up the R right there, that would have probably been a fight win, actually. A bit too much. Let's not in, says the guy that ran in first and died. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I kind of ran in and died there as well, to be fair. I need to uh, respect a bit more. I would have really wanted to pick up the R there and just, you know, win the fight afterwards because the R into like the Empower 
getting into the position the R was at in the back line towards the rest of it. I should have been able to finish it, but uh, alas, that was not the case here. I mean, the cleanest way to end this game currently is just to do Dragon into Baron and uh, after that finish the game. Because then we'll, we'll be more than strong enough. It's a bit slow paced, I suppose, instead of like kind of running it down the enemy nexus, but it is the safest way. Because if we win, the, if we lose the next fight, let's say, and we give them both Dragon and Baron, that would be horrible. So we really can't do that. This needs to be this, and then we need to just do Baron so they can't actually retaliate with those two. Like, let's say we lose the next fight as well. Then, if we take Dragon and Baron now, they will not be able to uh, at least get those after they win that fight. And that would not be a tremendous gold swing on our end. I'm dying a little bit too much at the end here, though. Right off to the team, sure. And then we just Baron. I need to pick up this thing. The reason we have to Baron first is because of what I said, right? <clears throat> if we don't Baron first and we lose the fight, it's over for us. Pretty much over for us, at least. Big damage here. Look at these hits. Let's get it down, make sure we get the Baron, make sure I pick up my empowered version of Baron. Or for my ult, sorry, with the Baron, uh, Baron one there. And that's really it. All we do have to do now is just shove it and it's over for them. Seems like Maokai went AFK though, which is a tad bit unfortunate. That is aggressive there, buddy. Go for the squishy one first, the easiest kill. Get the R of that one. Focus on the Yumi. Just E here finishes off this guy pretty easily. There we go. Beautiful. And all I have... Oh, give me that pentakill, please. Yes, let's go. Actually, a pentakill. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. So yeah, last two items here would have been wit sent into a black cleaver. And that's it for Belvev. Kind of a little sloppy at the end of this game fights, but that's okay. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to like button below, and I will see you guys in the end game stats. All right, so for the end game stats here, I ended up doing 25.6k damage, which is the second highest behind Alawi, which I'm not too surprised by. Alawi went for a lot of all in fights, and the enemy team kind of ran into her for a lot of those as well. So it's a lot of AoE damage she was able to gain off of her ultimate while dying for it at the same time. So it's a lot of like, I guess, suicide damage as well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, damage is not too bad here. Uh, true damage at 5.9k. We have objective damage at 94.1, which is obviously huge. Uh, trying to keep on top of this as much as possible with, like, any given objective to keep the game nice and consistent to our side. Regardless if we started throwing a little bit at the end there, partially due to, obviously, my own fault for uh, not playing the fight as great. But, you know, uh, healing done at 19k. Damage taken at 356 Self-mitigated at another 35.8. Gold earned at 16.8k, which is by far the most in my team here. This is a lot of, like, consistent farming, and obviously uh, the pentakill at the end helped. A uh, conqueror here for 1,000 healing. Ad adaptive damage here is more important, by the way, but you don't see that. Triumph for the extra HP and gold. The uh, alacrity for the extra attacks, but you can also take tenacity here if you have a better team comp on the enemy to uh, do CC reduction against, of course, if you need it. A coup de gras for additional damage at about 800. Eyeball collection, extra AD, and a relentless hunter for the movement speeds so you can get better positioning and map rotations. Uh, but yeah, last two items. Witsand into probably a cleaver uh, to be a little bit more durable with that. And with that being said, that is it for Belveth. I upload daily, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Bye.